We promise that we'll get the responses of the Lagos state government on some issues earlier treated on this show, including the Greenland Estate Abandoned Bridge Project, Ijegun Ijedudo Road, and the ongoing land reclamation around Iyanowaru. Hang on as the Commissioner for Information, Mr. Steve Ayonride, speaks on these issues. Stay with us. Initially, during the groundbreaking, the, the Honorable Commission of Works told us that uh, the bridge is going to take 17 weeks. After 17 weeks, when we didn't hear anything, we went back to them. And we were told that it was a mistake, that it was actually supposed to be for 12 months. And this was uh, uh, April 2016. It's over 12 months and nothing is happening. And if you take a look at the signboard, you actually see commencement dates of June 2016, but there's no completion dates. The bridge that we have here, which we were managing to go pass by, Anytime the flood recedes, you know, now they came and knocked it down for almost one year now. You look at this thing, you will see all the vehicles there. But it's like it has been abandoned. So we don't know the little bridge that we now pass through is the one that we built by ourselves, the residence bid, and we call it temporary bridge, just for our vehicles to go pass by. Greenland Estate residents call on the government to revisit the abandoned bridge construction project in their estate in Mende has attracted the response of the state government with a promise to come back to the project. Well, there was a review of that particular contract for that road, uh, which of course uh, necessitated that uh, there should be a halt, you know, uh, to the project. Uh, but it's, it has been revisited um, and in no time work will resume there, you know, either with the same contractor or a different, you know, uh, a set of contractors. But we have noted it, it has been revisited, uh, the work was reviewed and we will fix it. As the state government begins the construction and rehabilitation of several roads in the state, the Information Commissioner says Ijegun Ijedudo Road, which was previously reported on this program as being in a terrible state, would be looked into. It has been very, very bad. Every day you go to work and you are just stained up and dirty, nothing to show. It has been bad, I'm telling you, very bad, very, very bad. Sometimes if you come here in the evening, there are used to be hold up from this place to Ijegu. This also, I believe is surely affecting this station and some other around this place. Where you just have our appeal to the government. They are trying their best, though, but the best may not be enough. Appeal to them, at least people here are paying tax including me myself. There are a number of roads that, that are bad, that people are talking about. Regrettably, we can't fix everything at the same time. Uh, you heard what His Excellency the Governor said at the last town hall meeting, you know, a, an additional 43 roads have been added to those that PWC will fix. Uh, now that everybody is talking about the Jegui Jedodo Road, we will note it and within the constraints of the budget, we will see what is doable along that road too. The ongoing land reclamation activities in Owaro has remained a mystery to so many who are not sure of what the project is all about. The Honorable Commissioner throws more light on this. The reclamation going on uh, by Owaro is a futuristic, multi-purpose project. Uh, what you will have there in a couple of years uh, will be boutique hotels, will be bus terminals, will be um, a jetty. Uh, it will be like a hub for entertainment, for as a bus terminal, hotels where you can do park and ride, where you can drop your car for a whole day and pick a ferry, you know, all the way, you know, to the, to the Lagos Island. So it's a futuristic multi-purpose project. Uh, the phase where we are now, is to reclaim. We are still reclaiming. That will last till about the uh, the first quarter of 2018. After which we will have to go into shoreline protection, you know, and ensure that everything settles before we start building. That phase will take another uh, eight to nine months, and then proper construction because the design is ready. Uh, we are talking with corporate legals because it's going to be a PPP. Uh, arrangement. It is government uh, that is reclaiming at the moment, but of course the building um, 
and, and the level of execution will be in partnership with the uh, corporate sector, with you know private investors, you know individuals that are interested. I mean, individuals are invited to invest in that area. Hotels will spring up, um, bus terminals, multi-purpose event centers, and areas where you can park, taking up to between a thousand and two thousand you know car parks, so that we can do what we have park and ride. People coming from Bagada, coming from Mushodi, coming from Alakpere, coming from Baja can drive their cars there, get a ticket for a week or a day or a month, park your car, take a ferry to Lagos Island, return with ferry there, pick your car, you know, as it is done in, in, in established civilized world. That's what we are planning, you know, there. And um, in about one and a half, two years after work will have started, you will see a totally new, you know, small city, Wonder Hub. You know in that area that's what we are planning and uh, the reclamation is going through all the necessary checks so the water that you spoke about is not water coming from the reclamation itself is rainwater that is actually pouring because we have made sure you know the engineers are working the contractors are working to ensure that no home no resident is affected by that reclamation work that is going there so everybody uh, is being taken care of uh, the public and the governor spoke about it too at the, the town hall meeting that there's no cause for worry. We are very much aware of what we need to do there and we are ensuring that negotiations are the real beneficiaries of that project. You can also be part of Eyewitness by sending us your photos or videos. Simply shoot and upload on our Eyewitness portal via the Channels TV app. Download, launch and then swipe to reveal the eyewitness menu. Follow instructions on how to upload your story. Please endeavor to add a form of contact such as email or phone numbers so we can get in touch with you. For now, let's see what you already sent for the week. Here are pictures that you sent into our eyewitness portal beginning with this scenic aerial shot of Sabongeri in Kaduna State. Eyewitness reporter invites investors to the state, saying it has a beautiful landscape. Next comes this set of images from Calabar BSA Federal Highway in Cross River State, showing an eroding infrastructure. Eyewitness reporter expresses worry over the danger this poses to the unsuspecting motorists and those using it for the first time. Still in Lagos is this picture of a bad road from coconut axis of a Papa Oshodi Expressway showing tankers blocking one lane and trucks carrying containers on the other. Eyewitness reporter says the road has become almost impassable. He's calling for government's assistance. We have this next image from our Kuredi Ondo State Capital showing what our eyewitness reporter says is a condition of the Goba Road, especially on a rainy day. He laments the trouble motorists go through and is calling on the government for immediate intervention. This image is from Eket area in Akwaibum State, showing an overloaded vehicle on Marina Road. Eyewitness reporter wants the Federal Road Safety Corps to intensify their efforts towards safety awareness. Similar photo comes from Bida in Niger State, showing a dangerously overloaded vehicle. Eyewitness reporter wants men of the Federal Road Safety Corps to stop this act that is again finding its way back to the roads. Still on dangerous overload is this image of men sitting on a moving vehicle on the highway along Airport Road in Abuja, the Federal Capital Territory. According to our eyewitness, whatever happens to these people will affect other road users and they should therefore be checked. This image from Ozora Road in Delta State is showing a shot of a fallen trailer filled with cows. Eyewitness reporter calls for the removal of the vehicle, which he says is causing obstruction on that road. Our final picture is from Aingba in Kogi State, showing a fallen electricity pole. Eyewitness reporter says that it is dangerous and is already affecting the electricity in the area. He wants it fixed. Now, those were your stories. Do keep them coming. And don't forget, you could visit our YouTube page to access our previous editions. Our social media platforms are also there to help us serve you better. Till next week, when Eyewitness makes a return, I'm Chris Alems, and I'll keep a rise on you. Bye-bye.